Is that good? Depends on how you look at it. Now, in the past, I argue with some shithead about this version. People have to realize, this is a Super Nintendo. A Super Nintendo should not be able to run a game this good. And I also believe this has a Super FX2 chip, if memory serves me. If not, I could be wrong. But to see a 16-bit system run Doom as well as it did is phenomenal. And it's not better than the PC version. It's not better than the Jaguar version. And it's not better than the 3DO version or the PlayStation. But it is a good version. Very playable. Very fun. Fuck off. If you don't like it, suck a dick. You can play that piece of shit Brazilian Duke Nukem by Tech Toy for the Genesis. And if you think that's a better game, then you have poor taste, my friend. Very poor taste. Okay, I had to stop the camera before because I had to pull off the rough remaining amount of the games I had. And there's still a lot to show, so enjoy. The first final fight, like I said, didn't have a two player option, doesn't have the opinion of guy or option of the play guy. And if you look right here, you yeah, actually see a picture of guy jump kicking a dude. Now there was something released through Blockbuster called Final Fight Guy, and it's a very rare cartridge, and it's a collector's item. You play as Guy and Hagar instead of just Guy and Cody, so or Hagar and Cody, and it's still not two player. So and there's still the censored chicks poison and ivy, so not really worth it in my opinion, just to play Guy. If I want to do that, I'll just boot up Mame or something. Fight is history. Many of you remember if you were around during this time that Capcom tried to sue Data East for copying off Street Fighter. But then again, there was a lot of fighters out there that tried to copy Street Fighter. And to me, this is, it's a good fighting game, but it has nothing to do with Street Fighter. I mean, a lot of the moves may resemble that as Street Fighter, but so does uh, Tough Enough and Power Moves. Those games were stale. This was actually a quite good fighting game. Yeah, they used to really did a good job, and to revolt, to renew Karnov was actually kind of neat, too. They made a Neo Geo port, too, called Karnov's Revenge, which some people don't know about. Neo Geo had some interesting fight games, but other than that, it was a shitty system. Nice and around. Like I said, I love Capcom's arcade ports, and this was excellent. It was an arcade perfect port. Except for a few voice samples and the blood was missing. Other than that, it's perfect. The blood wasn't all that great anyways. It was just like a smear. Seriously. You play a game for game, not for blood, really. Except if you're playing a game like Manhunt or something. These three wonders of ease. I fell in love with this when I first played it. It was ported here by Sammy of America, and Sammy sucks. My friend jocks him because he has something to do with SNK, and... Well, SNK sucks now, regardless of what your opinion is of them. E3 and Super NES, however, is a very faithful port to... I really don't know what the original version of the game was for. I want to say TG16 CD, which was excellent. Had some of the best soundtracks you'll ever hear from a game. Of course, E's always had a good soundtrack. I suggest the Genesis version, though, if you want a card-based one, because that game actually had the most awesome use of the Genesis sound processor, and that's not an exaggeration. Super Mario All-Stars. You like Mario Brothers 1, 2, and 3, and you always want to play Lost Levels? Of course! So you know what? Get off your ass and buy the game. That's all I need to say. It's updated graphics and sound. You need to, you need to get it. There's really no ifs, what's, buts about it. Every Super Nintendo owner should own Mario All-Stars. It's that good. Earthworm Jim. Sadly, the missing level that was in the Genesis version was not in this, but that's okay. The missing level kind of blew anyways. For the cart systems, I prefer this version because of the extra sound samples that you'll never hear on another SNES game. And uh, the graphics are prettier if you're a graphics whore. But you want to know the all-around best version? PC. Because uh, that's Special Edition, which has extra levels of content you'll never see in the cart based versions. This game goes for a lot on eBay. I looked it up myself. And this is a damn near good good condition game. And this <laughs> you know the funny thing is? This game actually cost me two dollars. No exaggeration. 
And it was the only game made by Mickle River, and it's a port of a Neo Geo shooter. Schmuck. Very good, though. Very good. The last game I bought brand new from Best Buy when they were carrying them. Street Fighter Alpha 2 on the SNES. Now, if you want to compare it to the arcade, it's not so good. It's slow, the sound is compressed horribly, and the sound effects are horribly muffled. However, for the Super Nintendo to pull off a CPS2 game is a miracle. And I honestly think if you don't own any other version, pick this one up. Or if you just want to pick it up, just say, hey, I have Super uh, Street Fighter Alpha 2 on the SNES. It's worth picking up. I'm surprised how good it looks and plays. But if you're looking for an arcade perfect port, Go to the Saturn, Sega Saturn. Tommy Moe's Winter Extreme Skiing and Snowboarding. I thought it'd be an interesting game to play, and you know what? It's actually very fun. So the skiing aspect, not so much, but the snowboarding is a lot of fun. You do downhill ski, and your objective is to survive the trail, which is very difficult. But lots of fun. Because you have to test your skills and your reflexes. Blackthorn. Have you played Flashback in Out of This World? Chances are you have. You'll like this game. You carry a shotgun, you're a badass, and you have to save your own people. But you want to know the most interesting aspect of the game is that I've shown in the video? You can shoot your friends. That's great. Once again, killing of innocent people in games makes me happy. Some call this the Strider of SNES. Run Saver by Atlas. And that, partially that's true. Because most of the stuff you can do in terms of skill in Strider, you can do in this. Except this game has smaller smaller sprites, less um, less lesser levels. The level designs are pretty poor. But the game is all around fun. For an original game. Don't compare it to Strider. If you compare it to Strider, you're going to be disappointed. Oh, another game I'm going to be laughed at. Okay, the Cocketeer, or Rocketeer. I liked it when I was a kid, but now it's terrible. I can't play the game. Uh, never mind. Let's just throw that aside and forget I own it, okay? But I know I'm going to be rubbed. It's going to get rubbed in my face. <laughs> oh, no, I'm getting attacked by cards. Tell me. Ah! I know, most people think this game is a laughing joke, but I actually enjoy this game big time. This is Mystic Quest Final Fantasy. This game was only $40 when it was released, and I believe it was strictly American made. The game was called Final Fantasy USA in Japan, and we were laughed at for it. Well, give it a chance, because it plays, the graphic style is a lot like Final Fantasy 2 slash 4. Give it a try. Just give it a try. I, I think if you like any RPG, you'll like it. It's not groundbreaking in the slice. It's very simple, but it's a lot of fun. And it's good music, too. Not Final Fantasy, you know, something that's known for. You know, it doesn't have the orchestrated goodness that you're used to, but it still has good music. Paperboy 2. I love this game as well. Why? You can throw people at you can throw papers at people. And if you throw papers at certain objects, they come at you. It's hilarious. If you like Paper Boy. And who doesn't like Paper Boy? Come on. It's Paper Boy. <laughs> Never mind. Ah yes. This is what made me into a Final Fantasy fan. I'm no longer a Final Fantasy fan because I think the series sucks major horse cock today because the game is too much on flair and not enough on gameplay. They always come up with these bastardized magic systems that confuse the player to the point of wanting to break the game disc in half. This is simple as it gets, wonderful as it gets, the story will definitely entice you to play the game entirely through. And there's a lot of surprises to be had in Final Fantasy 2 slash 4. That one's actually known as Easy Type in Japan. Hard type, or the original, is not even hard. So I don't know why they call it easy type. Because, uh, honestly, the other one, you get items that it makes the game a hell of a lot more easier than easy type. I'm sorry, but it's the truth. 
Don't believe me? That's your problem. This is a cool shooter. B.O.B. The level designs are something to be desired, but the game is actually a lot of fun. I actually never played this when I was a kid, but I finally bought it at a game store, and I really enjoy it. It's a, run, it's a running gun game. And you just gotta survive as best you can when you go through the levels. I know that's not the most accurate description I can get for a game, but I'm just trying to show you what I have and give you a brief description. I don't need to give you a description for this. This is the pinnacle of what an adventure game should be. And let me tell you something. This compared to Prime, this blows all three Prime games out of the water. It's straight out 2D greatness. Prime is just running around scanning shit. That's boring. Fucking IGN form people. Oh my god, Prime has beautiful art and cool backgrounds. This is suck a dick. Fuck off. Eat shit die. Motherfuck you. You like arcade beat em ups? Then you need to get your ass out there and get this game. This is actually a sequel to the arcade game that came out back in 1987, I want to say, with the same name. This game is called, in other countries, Ninja Warriors again, because it's a sequel to it. This is actually made by Taito and Natsume. Natsume did the music, and you can tell, because it has that awesome flair that they're known for. It's only one player, though, but worth playing through, because it tests your skills as a beat-em-up. And the arcade sprites are amazing. And I'm saying amazing. I'm not exaggerating here. Once again, you don't own this game. You also need to be drug out in the street and beat with a dildo by a faggot but by the name of Hard Game. Excellent, excellent is all the title. It brings the series back to its original overhead format, even though Zelda 2 is still a better game than Zelda 1. Fuck you. This originally came out on the DS called Kirby Superstar Ultra, which is also a fantastic game. But however, if you want to go for a console's originality, this is definitely the game to get. Kirby stars in eight great games. They're all fun to play, even the two mini games, Samurai Kirby and Megaton Punch. All games are worth the play. It's Kirby action all the way. And Epic Yarn looks like it's going to be a good game. I like Kirby, and I hope he makes a game, or hope a game is made like Epic Yarn turns out to be a masterpiece. I hope so. Final Fantasy 3 slash 6. Another fantastic game. Great story. Great characters. Great enemy. And, in my honest opinion, I think Kefka could beat the living shit out of Sephiroth. But that's my opinion. Because Sephiroth is just a pussy compared to the psychoness of Kefka. Also, the Saban brothers would whoop the shit out of Cloud Strife and all the mother faggots you know from F7. I can't stand 7. I, if, if I ever find a disc of that game, I'm going to break it just to piss off the fans. Because I, I seriously cannot stand a game. It took everything about Final Fantasy that was good and ruined it. And yes, I'm over opinionated, but fuck you. That game sucked. Big time. It's the worst Final Fantasy I've played. Once I beat it, I never wanted to touch it again, and I never will, because the game is terrible. Battletoads and Double Dragon. I've stepped back from Battletoads and Battle Maniacs, definitely, in terms of graphics and gameplay style, but this was a budget title, and you could tell. The game looks like an 8-bit title, but a little prettier. Music is good, though. Very good. Matter of fact, this has one of the best soundtracks in the beat up I've heard to date. And it's funny, uh, kicking the bitches in the ass and slamming it on the ground. Any game you can beat a woman up in a funny way is always interesting to play for, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I do that in Bully. I always beat up the little girls because it's fun. Can't do that in real life, that's for sure. Sometimes, though, you 